Marseille. So Marseille is the second largest city in France. It's in the south of France. And last year we were European culture capital. Actually, it's not only the city of Marseille was European culture capital, it's the entire yellow area that you can see here. Before talking about the European culture capital, I have to give you a short background about Marseille and explain to you the reason why it was important for us at a certain point to try to become European culture capital. Marseille is a very old city, the oldest city in France, founded 2,600 years ago. And it's a city that has a long history, and it's a city that has received and welcomed other history. Many, many immigrants from Italy, from Armenia, from Northern Africa, from Greece, etc. It's a very multicultural city. It's a city that was pretty rich at the time when France had many colonies because Marseille was the harbor where all the trade from the colonies was arriving. And at that time, the economy was flourishing because the raw materials were coming and we have, let's say, industries, manufacturing and everything in Marseille, transforming all this resource. And then after the 60s, the situation has changed. All these countries became independent, hopefully. And the situation of Marseille started to change. And in the 70s and the 80s, the economy of Marseille was pretty bad. We had a very high um, unemployment rate. And it was important for the city to find ways, you know, to recover and to reinvent himself, to reinvent its economic model and so on. That's what the city started to do via a very important urban planning project that I'm going to introduce in a few minutes. Two more points that I wanted to add is that Marseille is a very, very large city. It's two and a half times bigger than Paris. I just mentioned that because uh, it's important to know that in terms of uh, responsibilities and all the things that we have to do to just maintain what we have, we have to do it on a very large territory, so it costs a lot of money. And at the same time, Marseille is still a poor city. It's a city where the tax income is quite low, the level of unemployment is quite high, 13%, 26% of the population is living under poverty rate. So it's the reason why around 2005, 2006, we started to think that it could be good to become European culture capital because it could help the city starting to build its future. Compared to the WDC, it's a rather long process. It takes two years to prepare the application, it's an internal competition within France. We had eight cities in competition, then it was reduced to four cities, and eventually only one city was chosen, Marseille. At that time, the competition was between Marseille, Bordeaux, Toulouse, and Lyon. And there was basically two reasons why Marseille was chosen. The first one is that we emphasized a lot the link between Europe and the Mediterranean Ocean. And it was the time when our president and Europe in general were pretty much interested in these um, connections with the neighboring countries and, and countries in the southern part of Europe. And the second one is that among these four cities, Marseille was the one that really needed most to get this uh, European culture capital. So then we had four years to prepare it, and 2013 was the year of the capital. Basically for us, what were the objectives? And by reading them, you will see that they are not very far away from many objectives from the WDC. The first one is that we really needed to transform the city from an urban point of view. We really used uh, ECOC a little bit like you could use the Olympic Games. Because it's a very simple project, you define it by three words, European culture capital. You don't need to explain for hours what it means. It's very well defined in, in time, you have a very precise time framework, you know that you have to be successful by the year you are the European culture capital. And it's the only way to put everybody around the table to agree to spend money on an ambitious project. And in a territory where, in generally speaking, the governance is quite complex, we have many layers of local governments, we have uh, central government, we have private companies, the non-profit sector and so on, it's quite difficult to make sure that everybody agrees on a similar goal. So to this extent, being European culture capital was really good because um, everybody worked together. Then of course, we, as I told you at the beginning, we really need to foster the economy and we emphasized a lot on the touristic aspect. We need to change the image of Marseille because the image of Marseille is Fran in France is not really good. What 
French national papers and media report most is about all the murders that we might have. Actually, we don't have that many, but they believe that Marseille is just a very, very, very dangerous city. Actually, it's not, and one of the objectives of the uh, European culture capital was to show that Marseille is much richer than just uh, security problems. Then we needed also to build a certain sense of confidence among the people and the stakeholders from the territory, because there was always, you know, this feeling that, um, well, compared to Lyon or compared to Paris, yes, we are a large city, but are we really able to achieve something great? You know, people, they, they did not really believe in themselves. And we needed to strengthen the social cohesion in a city where you have like 80,000 people coming from the Comorian Islands. Actually, uh, Marseille is the biggest city from the Comor. From the Comor. We have 80,000 people coming from Armenia. We have many people from Italy. We have many people with uh, Muslim religion, Jewish religion. So the problem of the community and how you can make all these communities uh, living together is also a very big issue. Like for WDC, there's many things that happened before European cultural capital, and we hope that many things will happen after. And in Marseille, the biggest project was what we call Euro-Mediterranean project, which was a very, very large urban planning project that started in 1995. That was a decision made by our prime minister and by the city mayor to redevelop all this area that you can see here, which is in this color, and which is the northern part of Marseille. This is Marseille city center. This is what we call all the pretty rich neighborhood. And this is the northern part, which is where the level of income is lower. And the problem of Marseille is that it has lost the connection with the sea. Because the arbor, which is here, is a private entity. And the people, they were not able, you know, to, to go up to the, to, the, to the seashore. So part of the project was to redevelop all this area and also to rebuild a link with the, uh, the city shore. And in this very general large project, we have two areas that has been very strongly transformed thanks to the European culture capital. The first one is this part, what we call Friche de la Belle de Mai. And the second one is this part, where we have a brand new national museum. All together, thanks to this uh, European culture capital, we've been able to invest 650 million euros for cultural infrastructures in Marseille, out of which about 240 was financed by the city government and all the other local governments and central government. And here, what you see is basically the um, sum of the cultural infrastructures that have been built for this uh, project. Of course, our landmark is the brand new museum, the MUSEM, the Museum of European Civilization, European and Mediterranean Civilization which was built by Rudy Ricciotti. And the museum, actually, it's not only this box, but it's also the, all this fort that used to be a military fort. And when everything opened in June last year, it was the first time ever for the people from Marseille to be able to enter into this major historical building and discover their city from the building. So the architect is Rudy Ricciotti, and the light designer is Yann Kersale. So just give you a three photos so that you can have an idea of what it looks like. And when we were talking about uh, the issue of legacy, what will remain after the European culture capital, we believe that this museum is going to be the uh, major legacy of the capital. The, it's the gift of the central government to uh, Marseille. And we hope that images from the museum will go around the world and that in many decades from now it will be as famous as Guggenheim Bilbao or Sydney Opera House. Apart from the Museum, we have several major buildings, one by an Italian architect, Stefano Boeri, which is a cultural center handling the issue of the link between France and the Mediterranean countries, a private museum by a foundation, the boss of which is the guy who earned all the company called Sodexo. And I mention it because it's interesting to see that not only the government contributed, but the private sector contributed a lot to the general project. This was a temporary exhibition hall, cultural center, during the time of the, uh, of the uh, capital. This is the view that you can get 
from the inside. This is a contemporary art center that was also designed by a Japanese architect, Kengo Kuma. This is the, the second, I would say, landmark. It's that the very city center of Marseille, which is Le Vieux Port. This is the place where the entire city gathers every time something important happens. It has been totally redesigned by Norman Foster, and basically the idea was to give back the arbor to the pedestrians and reduce tremendously the size of the cars. And here I just bring a photo of the opening day of the European culture capital because you know when you organize the, these kind of events, you, you never really know if it's going to work or not. And the opening is very important because it, it gives the impetus and it gives the, 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 the temperature, how things are going to, uh, to develop around the year. And we've been very surprised and of course very happy to see that uh, 450,000 people showed up in the street the day of the opening. For us, it means that more than 50% of the population was in the street for the opening. And it was very meaningful because it meant that, in a way, we could consider that the project was really shared by all the people living in Marseille. There's been, along the year, several projects taking place in this very city center where, you know, people from the north, from the east, and from the uh, south can gather. And I just give you one example, which was an uh, installation of, um, by a French uh, company. And it was two evenings. And each evening, about 200,000 people came. Apart from this major hub, I would say, next to the sea, the city government has also carried out quite a lot of projects with a great emphasis on museums, because the idea also in the in perspective of economic development was to say we really need to upgrade our museums because it's one of the very important point to attract visitors, national and international visitors. So we had four museums totally renovated, one on modern art, one on fine art, one on design, decorative arts, uh, fashion design, and one on the history of Marseille. A short emphasis on this museum which is about decorative art, so basically it's the history of design, and these museums are important because they are the place where young designers can go and get sources of inspiration. And the way the museum has been developed is that we invited also a lot of designers and contemporary artists to join. Of course, we also did quite a lot of efforts to renovate our cultural heritage, so this is a building where there is the uh, the Fine Art Museum, and it's a building from the 19th century. This is a, a building where the, the city mayor welcomes its guests when they come. The idea was also to be able to make sure that the culture would not only remain in the city center, but would also go in, you know, if possible, as many areas of the city as possible. So I'm just going to introduce very briefly a few other projects. This one, Friche de la Belle de Mai, is important because it used to be a tobacco factory where we have now more than uh, 60 different art companies, art team working. And it's really, I would say, the, uh, the place where creativity, you know, very emerging projects happen in Marseille. This has been, uh, there's been a lot of money invested here to create, to renovate exhibition halls, to create a new hall and so on. Uh, we had also an interesting private sector initiative by designer Oraito, who created an art center at the top of building by Le Corbusier, La Cité Radieuse. And his concept basically is every summer to invite a famous artist. Last year it was Xavier Veillant, and next year it will be Daniel Buren. In the winter time, he gives the, the, he, he gives the floor actually to young designers. And then this is in the northern part of Marseille, a city for a place for artists to work. Artists who are working in the field of art at public spaces. Capacity of bringing everybody around the table to gather a huge budget, 650 million euros is a huge budget, is really one of the very big legacy of the European cultural capital. And it's something that is going to help us building the future because we will rely on all these infrastructures and of course on their content, to make sure that the population of Marseille in the years to come will sti still be able to benefit from a lot of cultural and art activities. Now I'm going to introduce a little bit more what was the, I would say, the content, the software of the European culture capital. We had a total budget for the five years of 90 million euros 
And here you see the breakdown into the various fund, I mean, uh, how to say, uh, funding companies. 17% came from the private sector, it was 15 million euros. The biggest part came from Marseille city government. But as you can see, we had quite a lot of other stakeholders, including the French government who finance. The amount given, because someone asked me the question, the amount given by the European Union actually is quite limited. We did not do that for, to get money from European Union. We did that because more of the label and the capacity that this, um, um, the fact that European culture capital now is quite a, f a famous framework. The capacity that, you know, you, you go outside to bring something that is going to help you building cohesion inside. That's the figures. Of course, we had a lot of events, like in Helsinki, we had too many events, but I think it's part of the game to have too many events. People have to feel that it's a special year. We try to make sure that the biggest part of the budget really goes on cultural events. So we have events in many, many different fields, exhibitions, performance, festivals, and so on. But I just did a selection of events that took place the objective of which was really to change the way people can see their city and change the way people can live in their city. This one is a temporary exhibition installation by an artist, Kader Atia, on a place that has always been closed, a place where people can never go. So you had to take a boat to come here. It was a way, you know, to give them back this place that used to be a private one and absolutely inaccessible. This one is a group of projects that we call creative urban projects. The idea was to invite artists to work with the population to join urb small-scale urban regeneration projects. This one was an installation in an area of Marseille which is not that urban, it's more natural. And once again, it was you know, a way of showing people that you can experience different locations in a different way when you invite artists to have a new way of looking at them. This was art, uh, let's say, street art performance. This was a huge event, a transhumance, you know, when the, the animals, they leave the, uh, the lowlands to go to the mountains for the summer. And this event crossed Marseille. We had 300,000 people attending on the Sunday. And this was also another project, a funny project. It was a French artist who worked with many, many uh, inhabitants to build a temporary city using carton, and he had several buildings like that, and at the end of the day, it was destroyed. In terms of economic impact, we had 11 million visitors on the entire territory, which for us was really good. It was more than before, and in a year when the economic situation was really bad, uh, I think it has really helped us boost the economy in, in Marseille. And we had also a very huge media impact, and that was something very important for us. And I think, as always, international media had a better view or reported in a better way than national media. We were also on the New York Times. I think that there is a guy at the New York Times who is really fond of WDC and ECOC. <laughs> it's probably his editorial line. But anyway, for us, it has been really great because it shows a very high level of recognition. You know, when we discovered in January last year that the New York Times rated Marseille number two, knowing that number one was Rio in Brazil and that no one can compete against Rio, uh, we were very happy. And it was also a way you know, of showing everybody what we did is recognized as something very important as far as New York, as far as such an important city. And in terms of you know, self-confidence and demonstration that what you do is not something which is local, but it's really something which is international and that reaches international standards, it's very important. I mean, everybody, our question is, what are we going to do next? This was the closing ceremony. We achieved something great for 2013. It was an event by itself. It also has to be the beginning of the future. And the question is, what are we going to do next? Of course, we will have to think about it. For us, one of the main challenge, I, all this area, where you see that every single dot is a different local government, and these group of colors are also different local governments. Everything is going to merge from 1st January 2016. So we are going to, to pass from the, uh, the concept of the large city to the concept really of the international uh, metropole. And that is going to be for us a very important challenge because we think that we are going you know, to reach the uh, 
the level that you need to really compete at the international level and to be a city. We will have done that. It means that the entire territory, it will be about 1.9 million inhabitants, more than 730,000 uh, jobs, and we will have as many as 93 different small cities working together. So it's going to be difficult in terms of governance, of course. I think it's a good sign to show that, you know, we change scale. So thank you very much. And uh, I wish you the best for 2016.